Creativity can solve almost any problem. The creative act, the defeat of habit by originality overcomes everything. I recently came across this quote and as a self-proclaimed creative person, I found it really insightful. I think that creativity is not a profession, it's not a career, it's a way of acting and thinking regardless of what you happen to do for a living. So tonight I want to talk a bit about my experience and perceptions around cities and creativity. I love cities, I've always lived in cities, and I think that cities are the ultimate epicenter for creativity where density and proximity and intensity of ideas can truly unleash innovation. On the other hand, rapid urbanization combined, com combined with restrictive urban planning can create very sterile environments that prohibit community and inhibit any expression of individuality. So I grew up in Mexico and cities look nothing like this. Mexican cities are vibrant, are chaotic. You can always expect the unexpected. In Mexico, it's not unusual to see people take over public or private space and transform it according to their needs or desires. Um, so in the next image, you'll see a classic image of a Mexican person taking over an intersection. And to me, this is an ultimate creative act where someone with very few resources can take them and transform them into, a, in this case, a business opportunity and while transforming the public space at the same time. Uh, so I grew up very excited and motivated by watching these things all over the street. And these kind of creative acts, the way I like to call it, happen to buildings as well. So on this side, you can see a classic example of Mexican DIY architecture where self-construction allows people to transform their dwellings and adapt them according to their life changes. And on the other side is a building by a Dutch firm, very famous, and I just find it funny to see how it looks a lot like the Mexican one, but it requires a lot more technology to do it in the Netherlands and in Mexico. So in 2008, I decided to take this inspiration and take it a step further. So I got into UBC, packed my stuff, moved to Vancouver. Uh, and I was here to study spontaneity and creativity in cities. And little did I know that I was moving to a city that is really well known for its urban planning, which means lots of order and very clean streets with very little fuel for my investigations. <laughs> so when I moved to Vancouver, this is what I found, a city that I found very sterile, very uniform. And I was like, what the hell? I'm here to study spontaneity. And I started to think, if the buildings look like this, do people look like that as well? Like, what's, what's going on? So maybe I was a bit unfair in Vancouver. I was a newcomer, and I was living in Kitsilano, and most of my days were all around going between Kits and UBC with the occasional trip to the downtown studio in Chinatown. But somehow, I never managed to cross that invisible line that happens around Main Street and where, where the real city begins. So... <laughs> I lived in obscurity for a couple of years, and when I graduated from UBC is when I started to really discover the city. And for me, that meant getting engaged in a bunch of design projects. So I built this weird-looking chair, learned how to weld, uh, got engaged in a laneway market, built some bookshelves for an independent bookstore, and it was really exciting to discover the food and cafe culture of Vancouver. So it was then when I really discovered the real city. And the most important part of these explorations was tapping into what I call the creative capital of Vancouver, and it's a bunch of people that really inspired me. People who were following their passions, uh, creating their own jobs, and contributing to the city enormously. And that's when I realized that, wow, we need to keep these people in Vancouver. It's really important. And for the first time in two years, I was inspired and motivated by them. In 2012, I got engaged in the housing affordability issue. I don't know if you remember, but it was a really hot topic all over the news. Uh, city Council had formed a housing affordability task force, and they launched a competition. So I just got excited. I said, like, wow, things are going to change. There's going to be things happening, but of course, as momentum died, nothing happened. It stayed the same. And around the same time, I was living in this tiny 400 square feet apartment. My husband and I had moved there to save money. Great idea, but very soon we realized that the lack of space started constraining our lifestyle, and we had to give up our passion. So here you can see I'm trying to build that weird chair while he's brewing. Just didn't work at all. So at this point, um, it's when my interest in housing with, combined with my personal crisis led to take some action. So in November 2012, a group of friends and myself formed the Laboratory of Housing Alternatives, or LOHA for short. And LOHA is a platform to ideate and build housing for creative and emerging professionals in Vancouver. LOHA is meant to become a platform where people can come together, share ideas, and transform it into action. Uh, so when we formed LOHA, we created one rule, and that one rule is no bitching allowed. We realized that housing can awaken some really negative thoughts in people, and we said, that's awesome, let's take that energy and channel it into a productive and creative conversation. So our first act or event with LOHA um, was to put together a visioning workshop. We wanted to open up the conversation to the larger community. We didn't know if anyone would show up, but it ended up being a great event. We had over 90 people from diverse backgrounds and ages. We had a great time. There were food and drinks. We had speakers and a workshop. 
And just a good reaction from the audience told us that we were tapping into something important, something that mattered for our city. So since then, LOHA has been focused in organizing a series of engagement events. We want people to come together because we believe that bringing creative people together will lead to creative solutions. So we've been mostly in the engagement and advocacy side of things, but we want to start migrating into building projects that allow us to get ideas off the ground. So that's our goal over the next couple of years. And the next image will show you some of the events that we've been having, what we've been up to. So we've had some housing tours, panel discussions, presentations. We facilitated a few workshops for community groups as well. So we're supporting our community. And we're having our last event this Saturday, so I invite you all to attend and join the conversation as well. And the more I continue to work with LOHA, I realized that my interest in housing as a noun is shifting to using housing as a verb. Vancouver has a huge need to house our creative capital to retain it in our city. So that's leading me to get involved in new projects. The latest one is in partnership with my friend Sarah Hay, and we're looking at developing a business plan or a structure for a co-working space for people with children. So we, I don't have kids, but I'm kind of planning for the future maybe. Uh, but I realize that it's really difficult to be a working parent in Vancouver. The housing prices are expensive, daycare is expensive, so we want to provide a platform for uh, creatives with children to exist and to stay in our city. Like, it's an important component to Vancouver. So I just want to leave you with one last thought. Uh, I truly believe that creative thinking contributes enormously to our city. It can make the city better for everyone, more livable, sustainable, you name it. So imagine how powerful it would be if Vancouver was the creativest city in the world. Thank you.